All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. It is October now, so thus it is time for another monthly U.S. drought situation update. PayPal and Patreon links are both down below for anybody who wants to support me. Only do so if you actually can. So, as visible on the current uh, drought situation map, the U.S., or rather the, uh, the western portion of the U.S., is still in a severe drought, carrying on also from drought conditions of last year, but the present situation, especially this year, has had uh, reservoir levels across the West dropping, many of them really fast, and now most of them are down to dangerous levels, uh, especially for California in particular, uh, where numerous regions within the state are considering implementing uh, water use restrictions and so thus, combined with all of the other things going on with that state, California continues down its path to becoming unlivable. Now starting off with the two largest reservoirs as usual, Lake Mead and Lake Powell. Two enormous reservoirs, uh, basically flooded canyons along the path of the Colorado River, Lake Mead at the bottom of Nevada, Lake Powell on the border of Utah and Arizona. Both of them have uh, been losing decent portions of their water level over the course of time, and have in particular this year lost pretty decent portions of it. Like almost all other lakes and rivers and everything, uh, they do have seasonal cycles throughout the year based on uh, regional climate patterns of rainfall, snowmelt, and everything. However, over the course of time in the long term, and especially these past two years, they have not regained during their, their refill season part of the year anything near what they've been losing. Lake Mead this year in particular uh, had gotten up towards like 1,090 elevation feet. That's the, uh, the measurement of the U.S. lake system is in elevation feet or how high the uh, surface of the water is above sea level. It had uh, refilled back up to about 1,090 and uh, then over the course of the year up until now, where it's in its uh, its flat season, where it usually stays still, it dropped all the way down to its uh, lowest level ever since it was first filled, uh, since the dam was first flooded, at about 1,068 or 1,067. So it's lost about 25 feet of water level this year, which uh, translates to it now being down to only 34% full. Lake Powell uh, this year has lost about 40 feet, and during its refill season, where it normally regains uh, like a dozen or two at least, it uh, only regained about 3 feet of water level, and is now down at about 3,545, which for Lake Powell has it now under 30%, heading down towards 29% full. And these two getting so low is particularly bad, because despite their apparent location, uh, Lake Mead may appear like it just provides water for Las Vegas, and Lake Powell may look like it just provides water for uh, nobody because it's in the middle of a desert. However, that is not the case. You see, California gets a pretty decent chunk of its water from out of state. It's imported through various pipelines across several hundred miles, drawn from uh, a smaller reservoir on the Colorado River downstream from Lake Powell and Lake Mead on the uh, California-Arizona border. And during conditions of a lower river flow or drought, uh, which have become perpetual basically in present day, in order to make sure that the river level and that uh, smaller reservoir's water level stay at a uh, decent height to allow extraction of water into that pipeline system to get pumped out to California, Lake Mead and Lake Powell constantly have to release extra water to flow downstream to make sure that that level stays good. And so under bad conditions, uh, they have to constantly release so much, like they've been doing, that uh, they perpetually lose more and more water level. And obviously, uh, that can only keep going for a certain amount of time before uh, they run out of their stored water level, and uh, the only thing they can keep letting through is just however much water is flowing in the Colorado River. And it looks like that's the direction that things are heading in. On top of, we'll now look at California's own internal water supply issues. Now within California, a huge chunk of the water is in reservoirs up in uh, the northern half, and water from those reservoirs 
is either directly put in to the aqueduct system as California has uh, various pipelines and aqueducts throughout the state to move water around from places where it's abundant to everywhere else or it flows out of those reservoirs into rivers that flow down to points uh, where they then enter the aqueducts and so going through California's reservoirs uh, starting with the largest Lake Shasta way up in the north Lake Shasta this year in particular has almost lost a hundred feet of water level after going through its uh, its refill or its uh, recharge season however you prefer to phrase it it had uh, gained a few tens of feet back and gotten up to about 980 however now it's uh, dropped all the way down to 890 thus down over 150 feet uh, from its full level which would be at about 1067 and percentage wise that translates now down to less than a quarter left. It is down to 23%. Lake Folsom this year had dropped by about 25 feet, and then it stopped uh, for a while, for like a month or two. Uh, it dropped from 400 down to 375. Then it kind of stopped at 375. However, now it has now dropped down over the last several days to 373 which in percentage has it at the same as Lake Shasta, it's down to 23%. Lake Orville, possibly the most famous at the moment uh, because it's the first one who had to shut down its dam because the water level uh, dropped so low that they can't pass it through to run the turbines anymore. Lake Orville, if full, would be at 900 feet. By the start of its drawdown season this year, it had already dropped down to 730. And, uh... It dropped all the way down, now under 630 feet. And had dropped down to 628. However, over the last couple weeks, it has slowly regained one foot up to 629. But uh, that still has it at only 22% of capacity. Millerton Lake, Millerton Reservoir, it had dropped down almost to uh, 500 feet, around 502 or so. And over the last uh, couple months, it has been brought back up to close to 530. However, now it has begun dropping down again and is uh, now down to 528 and seems to be going back down in uh, terms of general direction. The Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, most of the water from which is channeled over to supply the San Francisco Bay Area. Hetch Hetchy, when full, is normally at about 3,806 elevation feet. Uh, if empty, it would be down at 3,500. Hetch Hetchy, on a normal yearly cycle, uh, tends to do pretty well. It will get drawn down to about 3,750, 3,740. And then, most years, it actually replenishes back up to full. However, uh, last year was pretty bad, both because of drought and because of uh, extra water consumption fighting all of the fires. And Hetch Hetchy's water level uh, was drawn all the way down almost to 3,700 and it did not uh, recover from that it didn't replenish all the way back up to 3806 it only got back up to about 3786 and hit summer it started dropping down and is now down to just under 3740 at 3739 elevation feet the san luis reservoir has lost over 100 feet of water level and uh, has dropped this year from about 470 elevation feet all the way down now under 360 down to 359 and is pretty close to being empty it's about to enter single digit percentiles as it is down to about 12 or 11 percent of capacity now new bullard's bar reservoir has lost uh, close to 70 feet of water level this year uh, dropping from around 1,870 elevation feet down to now 1,801. Don't have a percentage reading for it, uh, but I know the, the relative danger zone, quote-unquote, for it, where most of the water volume uh, would most likely be gone, is uh, once it's down close to around 1,750. The Dom Pedro Reservoir has uh, dropped from 775 elevation feet down to 728 over the course of this year which has it uh, still a little bit better than most of the others. That currently has it rated half at a flat 50% uh, full, 50% of capacity. So out of all of those on the list, at least the California list, it is the second uh, most full out of any of them. 
However, obviously that level's going down now, as basically, uh, since they all feed into the aqueduct system, as some reservoirs uh, empty out, or at least get close to it, obviously they're going to start uh, releasing more excess water or extra water from reservoirs that still have more water in them to try to compensate for that loss. Also, obviously, you can only do that for so long until you don't have any more reservoirs to do that with. Lake McClure uh, regained some water level at uh, the in the earlier part of the year, uh, got back up to 760, However, it has now uh, dropped by over 80 feet over the course of the year thus far, down to now 676 elevation feet, which has it down to only 20% of capacity. And the last two for California are the Comanche and Pardee reservoirs, the first of which had much lower elevation. Uh, its high point, its full level would be about 235 elevation feet. It's currently down at around 196, but Comanche also has regained some water level just recently over the last couple of weeks. However, over uh, the last couple of weeks, it's regained a whole one foot. Uh, which has translated to about three percent and it was down and it was down at 41 percent it's now back up to 44 and in place of uh, further comanche falling pardee has been falling instead and over that and over those last few weeks has dropped from 83 percent fold down to 77 and that's it for california now going to the few others utah where most of the population basically just lives in and around Salt Lake City, fed by a number of rivers and creeks and streams, which flow down from a number of reservoirs in the surrounding mountains. Reservoirs like the Jordanelle Reservoir, which has dropped, at least since I first uh, started looking at it uh, several months back, from 73% full down to now just over 52% full. Along with the Pine View Reservoir, which is now down by... Uh, more than half. At its full level, it would be at about 4,900 elevation feet. And uh, during its refill season, its most recent refill season, it got back up a bit over 4,890. And since then, over the course of the year thus far, it has now dropped down to about 4,853 elevation feet. And its lowest point, its empty point, is only a few tens of feet away at 4,817 feet. And Deer Creek Reservoir, uh, if full, would be at 5,418 feet. Uh, they've been dropping this year from a bit over 5,400 down towards uh, 5,390. They stopped for a few weeks a while back because Utah actually got some rain and thunderstorms for a little bit. However, that didn't last and uh, thus now Deer Creek has resumed declining. They had regained uh, during that rainy thunderstorm time frame up to about uh, 5392 I believe it was. Now however uh, they've dropped back down and are down to 5389 and their absolute lowest point is uh, somewhere between 5270 and 5280. In Arizona where most of the population lives in Phoenix or around Phoenix in the general area uh, Phoenix is supplied by a number of surrounding reservoirs that get uh, collectively measured in their, their total collective percentage. And they were dropping from the upper 70s in percentage and had gotten down to, and had gotten down to about uh, 67 or 66. And then, during that same time frame as mentioned with Utah, uh, they got a bunch of rain and thunderstorms for a couple weeks. That recharged uh, their reservoirs back up to about 73% full. However, then that was kind of the end of that. They've gotten some rain off and on since then, but it hasn't been enough. And uh, they've begun falling back down again and are back down to a flat 70%. And lastly, the Northwest, a region normally otherwise known for getting quite a lot of rain, is also a part of the drought. The Williamette River in Oregon uh, has pretty consistently this year been roughly around 20% uh, below its normal level and is still in that general range right now. It's regained a tiny bit uh, compared to where it was, and is presently only 18% below its normal level. And the massive Columbia River, forming most of the border between Oregon and Washington, has been pretty sizably below its uh, normal flow rate, its normal capacity, uh, during the earlier part of the summer when it would normally be at about 35,000 cubic feet per second of water flow, 
it was only uh, between 20 and 25 and normally that flow rate does drop and uh, on average over time normally uh, during the later part of the summer it would be around uh, 25 or a bit under 25 however during this summer this late summer at least it was only around like 15 or 16 and as of the present moment not the high points but the mean the average between low and high normally as indicated by the triangles it would be up at around like 11,000 cubic feet per second as of this time of year however as of the moment the rough average flow rate between highs and lows is uh, closer down towards around only 8,000 cubic feet per second so the troubles persist and don't really show any signs of abating but that's all of it for now, so thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. I have dozens, hundreds of other episodes and stuff about from water to uh, energy, oil and gas, mining. So you can watch or listen to any of those if you want. You can support me through PayPal or Patreon. Both links are down below. Only do so if you actually can. May God bless, protect, and save all of you. And grant replenishing rain to those who need it most. And I will see you all around next time.